full of confidence. First blow of the bout is a right hand lead by Molinaris. Now Starling sets up in the peekaboo stance. boxing from Molinaris than I've seen in this film and watching. He's more direct, he's straight up, which allows Stalin to throw his combinations and land them. These jabs by Molinaris are being picked off by Starling. Within the past year, Marlon has been working with Eddie Futch and that has only served to enhance his already considerable defensive skills. Well, working with, well, having Futch in your corner is always a plus for you because he'll show you things that you normally have forgotten and not use it. And here with Starling, Starling doesn't use it, it's not using his jab like he should be. He needs to use his jab a little bit more to get a little closer. Here he's rushing himself. Neither fighter has landed a significant blow so far in round one. Starling beginning to step up a little closer now to try to get some range for the jab. Penetrate the defense of Marlon Stalin. Keeps those hands very high. Peekaboo style. Starling's jab is beginning to find its mark. But see here, what you see in Molinaris, he's just moving around, not really throwing a lot of punches. And the punches that he is throwing, they're straight punches landing on the elbows of Stalin. The way to get around that, throw a body shot. You know, there he threw a body shot. Go around those punches. Work on the midsection, the liver shots. Watching now as Stalin goes in with his steps, goes in with his head down. The uppercut of Molinaris will be very, very effective. He hasn't thrown it yet. <laughs> and now Molinaris begins to try to go downstairs just as you suggested. He Time! Patient feeling out rounds for both fighters. Keep that jab going. Single and double. Don't let him walk to you. See? Keep him going back. When he goes down underneath, I don't just stand him straight and punch. I want to get down low. And don't try to go with, with the bomb. Get on the target. With the first and second shots, and the third shot will be the big shot, okay? Okay. All right. Don't let him throw too many punches before you counter back. Okay. Okay. The base, yeah, Come yeah. on, control, control. Faint and sicken. Faint and sicken. What I noticed in that round, Ray, is that Starling, who frequently is a manic kind of fighter and, and uses and sometimes wastes a lot of energy, was patient there, and that may be a sign of, of Futch's handling. As he sold the experience and also the patience. The patience is a virtue, as they say. And he has to be patient against a guy, a young kid like this, Molinaris, who's very, very aggressive and very cocky. Darling expended a lot of energy in the early rounds of his April 16 defense against Mark Freeland, when many thought he had weakened in the late rounds en route to the draw. Some of us at ringside didn't believe that bout should have been scored as a draw. Eddie Fudge and Stalin's corner also indicated not to let Molinaris get his punches off. Don't stand there and take punches and then come back. You be first. You initiate the tempo of the fight. And it looks as though Molinaris has gotten the same instruction, Ray, as he becomes a little more aggressive and lands a right hand lead. Part 
follow the um, instructions given by Fudge. Not for Stalin to stand straight up. Both fighters significantly more aggressive in round two. Well, that's the third right-hand lead he's managed to land in the round. Something that Starling's last opponent, Mark Breland, virtually never tried. Uppercut by Malinaris. Starling told me he watched the tape of Malinaris maybe once or twice, and he always the Malinaris looked the same. But here, I'm sure he's seen a different picture. Malinaris. Malinaris is beginning to show real variety in his punch selection here and is able to step up inside and control Starling in these exchanges. I like the way Malinaris is moving. He's not being a stationary target. He's using the ring. He's faint. Good upper body movement. Come with the right hand. Straight right hand. There's the right hand again. Good left hand by Starling. Two of them as he doubled with the left hook. And for the moment, that slows Molinaris down. Molinaris has a tendency to telegraph his right hand. Watch when he throws his jab, how he brings his right hand back and then throws it. He also slapped the left on that right hand lead. Good left hand after the bell by Molinaris. Starling went back after him. And that was dangerous. This one, listen to what I'm going to say. You have to do it stronger. Stronger. How do you feel? Strong? Listen, when he's wet, don't let him think. Don't let him think. Come into him. Stronger. Jab, jab, and right. Clear? Do not have any respect for him. A gentleman and classy man, Mr. Michael Spinks, ladies and gentlemen. He can deal with the champion. Now let's see if he becomes more aggressive and positive as his trainer implored him to be. That trainer, Amilcar Bruza, used to train a fighter named Rodrigo Valdez. You may remember from bouts in the early 70s. A very good middleweight champion. Now we trying to now we see Stalin really trying to manhandle Molinaris. Trying to load up with one big punch.
No solid or clean shots being landed by uh, either fighter. And Molinara is not quite as quick in this round, Ray, as he was in round two. Well, at least he's landed punches. The thing about it, he's throwing his jab, and they do count as points. Right hand, three in a row to the glove of Starling, but they were glancing off the glove and onto the cell. It also appears, Jimmy, that uh, Starling's trying to make Molinari wear himself out. Throw all his punches, exert himself, and then he come on strong. Starling landed the counter right, and Molinari says, wait a minute, I'm going to reestablish command here. More and more, Molinaris is dropping the right hand and allowing Marlon to land that left hook. Molinaris didn't do what his trainer told him to do before that round, and that's why I thought he lost. Okay, that was better, but you're letting him out hustling. Okay. He's in front, champ. He's in front. Okay, yeah, let this kid get all that confidence. No. See, now, when he does what he did on the roof, that throw to the body. Forget the head. He wants you to punch to the head. Okay. Understand that? And you're not punching nearly enough to the body. Okay. I want you to dig on that. Okay. With both hands. Okay? All right. That's deep breath. Who gets this guy here? Yeah. Oh, okay. But you, you let him punch Letterman, too much. How have you scored the Without fight? coming back to something. I've got it. Two rounds to one. 29 to 28 in favor of Mucci Starling. I gave him rounds one and three. I gave the second round to Thomas Molinaris based on a good right hands he landed. But, you know, let me tell you something. We score for clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense. And in Starling's case, you have to take defense into consideration considerably because he's a good defensive fighter. He catches that jab every time. I've scored the fight the same way. But one thing we know, it's a fight. And a pretty good one as round four begins. What I like about it, Ray, is it's boxing at close quarters. Neither man is running. They're both probing, looking for weaknesses, trying to force openings. Well, the plus that they have, Larry, is that upper body movement. In fact, Stalin, uh, he complimented, good combination, he complimented on his upper body movement. If anything, he was impressed by that. which may begin to befuddle Molinaris over a period of time is the gradual discovery of how strong Starling Chin is. This man has taken many of the best punches which could have been dished out in the welterweight division and he hasn't been down. Well, the key is maintaining this pace. Also for Molinaris because he is the younger of the two, less experienced of the two. And once Starling takes him to the deep waters to the later round, he makes it different. But here, Paul Norris is holding his own. Right hand lead by Starling landed. Going back to the jab, which was effective in round one. And scoring with it. Molinaris beginning to stagger just a little bit, losing some of the resiliency in his leg. by Starling. Remember, Ray, when Fudge said the third one would land, that's exactly what happened in that combination. Because he's throwing, he's not just loading up with one punch, he's throwing in combinations. Too many times fighters make the mistake of trying to load with one punch. He's got to throw a combination. Good cover right hand by Stalin. And the left that followed. Malinaris comes right back with the right. But Mucci is blocking most of these punches now with his gloves. Watch the lead off right by Stalin. A little faint and drops the right hand. There it is again. There it is again. Starling, I thought he really established in 
that round that he was the boss. We'll see if he can sustain it. Don't throw the water. Don't throw the water like that. Thomas, you got to hear him harder, harder, harder. Back up and then come back to him. When he is standing, come to him. When he's coming at you, then back up one step and then come back to him. Listen. When he's, when, when he's coming to you, back up one step and then come back to him. round for Molineras. He's got to somehow establish the fact that he's not being dominated. Because if he's dominated, not only does the, the Starling know it, but the officials start to feel it. And, and anything, and if it's a close round, the officials will give it to Starling. He must come back and establish something in this round, otherwise find himself well behind in a lot of different ways. And you heard Rusa telling him to gain power by stepping back and then coming forward at Starling. That will give Starling the chance to keep backing him up, but Marlon wants to be aggressive and go forward. I'm watching the way that Starling is peppering his man with a jab, beat off right hand. In fact, Molinaris is talking to him. I asked him whether or not he's been knocked down. He said no, but he's been cut. But he would not disclose where he was cut. And that jab is really, really frustrating and aggravating Molinaris. And Marlon's beginning to step in and throw him around the ring a little bit. Good right hand inside by Starling. The left as he stepped away. A lot of these punches are landing. Starling, meanwhile, continues to block most of what Molinaris is now throwing with his arms, his elbows, and his gloves. Molinaris appears to be wearing down just a little here. A little less steam on his punches. Here are signs of desperation throwing those looping right hands. Yeah, the right hand is ringing now. Look at Starling peppering the face of Molinaris. Here is a man, a champion, that knows exactly what needs to be done, and he wants to do it now. There's a lot of swelling now around the right eye of Molinaris. Darling loves to combine the body shots with a looping overhand right. Now he doesn't need it as Molinaris' guard is dropping and Marlon is able to just hit him with straight right hands. Look at how low Molinaris' hands are going. It must be frustrating, Ray, that when a fighter is throwing so many punches and they're all being, almost all being blocked. And they're all punches too, Larry. It's just a matter of time here. He's starting to wear his man down. Stalin now is showing the experience that he has, working the body, four combinations, punching with both hands. And becoming more dominant with each passing round. Oh, he buckled ball now just a second there. This is a brilliant exhibition of boxing by Marlon Starling right here in round five. On, bang that body some more, keep those combinations coming three and four punch combinations instead of one. And, 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 and remember, we just now know earlier we talked about out. three punch combinations. There you see three that land. Take a look from another angle. A fighter is happy to throw three punches and get one good one in. He got three good ones in. Yes. Tírame la cara. de costado cuando está ahí al lado suyo. They're working on Molinaris. When he comes to you, let him go on the side. Don't, don't let him come directly to you. Let him go on the side and hit him harder. Don't wait to hit him. And hit him. Our punch 
Stat colleagues tell me that in the last round they counted 70 attempted punches by Molinaris and he landed only eight. This could be the beginning of the end. Jim, the reason I say this is because Stalin was able to hurt his man in that fifth round. And I don't see as much confidence in Molinaris' face as we had as we did early the earlier round, fellas. Body behind his punches. Well, two rounds ago, you heard Brusa telling Molinaris to back up and then come forward. He's doing the backing up half. All of those punches were blocked. You just see the maturity in Stalin. He's so much stronger than Molinaris. Just started to pick his man apart. Keep in mind that only a year ago, Marlon Starling was a carefully chosen opponent for Mark Breland in Columbia, South Carolina. Breland, another of those young, up and coming Colts, uh, whom Starling is taking care of in his career. He administered the only defeat on Simon Brown. Watch what happens here as he retaliates. Starling lets this man throw his punches, and then he comes off with the, a series of combinations. Starling doing is throwing his combinations. Not all those punches are not really hard. He wants the third or fourth punch to have an impact. Just trying to get a feel for his uh, his bangs. You see, the second combination he throws one or two, then three or four combinations. Brilliant stuff. We've seldom seen him better. Counter right hand by Stalling. Starting, starting to really pick his shots now. Looking for the target. That's when a man picks his shots. And Molinares is arm weary but won't stop throwing punches. Now the uppercut for Stalling would be great because you see how Mol there's the uppercut. Because <laughs> Molinares' is chin, he's leaning to the punch. Pick another punch for him, Ray. Watch the right hand. <laughs> but also the uppercuts. Those are the type of punches that raise the chin of his the opponent for the left hook. Oh! Oh! That punch was clearly after the bell. And Starling is being counted out. Eight! at the time it landed. I could be proven wrong here, but let's see. Larry ha la la Larry Hazard Oh, no question about it. Definitely at least a 
a second after the bell. He launched the punch well after the bell had sounded. Beyond any doubt, I don't know if there's any recourse. Let me go up in the ring and check. So Larry Merchant goes into the ring. You look at Tomas Malinaris, the fighter who is still standing. Marlon Starling is still on a stool in the neutral corner just in front of us. This is one of the most star-crossed careers in boxing. An uphill fight all the way. And right now it appears that Marlon Starling may have been victimized by a terrible bad break. Well, there's nothing really to be said other than to feel, feel uh, sympathy for Marlon Starling. But hopefully we'll get another shot at that knockout. And here both guys are throwing punches. Starling's inside. Marlon is throwing his punches. Can't really hear the bell because of the crowd. There you heard it. Heard the bell. Saw the punch launch clearly after the bell. There had been other punches after the bell earlier in the fight. We look at it again, Ray, and let's stay out and be quiet. But also, they were, throwing, they were in the motion of throwing punches, too. So it's tough to justify. Above us, Tomas Molinaris, his eyes swollen shut from the punches issued by Marlon Starling, is shouting to the assembled crowd. The Colombian flag is waving throughout the arena, and we go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The referee, Joe Cortez, rules that the final punch was thrown as the bell rang. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell. The count continues. The winner and new champion from Barranquilla, Colombia, Tomas Molinari. It is a human sport, Ray, and it is subject to human error. And I believe we have just seen one. Larry Merchant is standing in the center of the ring with referee Joe Cortez. And I'm going to throw to Larry right now. I don't know if we can get a camera shot, but Larry, you go. All right. I'm with referee Joe Cortez. Joe, how did you see the punch? Well, the punch was they were, the punch was in motion at the bell. Uh, Molinari threw the punch. I, you know, and as it was the real bell was ringing, the punch was already in, in, in action. And he just banged him and tagged him. I have to count. What you know? would you say if we showed you a replay and it showed that the fight, the punch was launched after the bell? Well, I tell you, I, I, I'm human. I saw the punch as they were already in progress when the bell rang. The punch is already in progress, and uh, he got tagged. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Joe. Just one thing. Uh, just one thing, I, I do want to tell you that Marlon Starling's handlers have stated that they will protest this fight. Jim? Oh, great. All right, thank you very much, Larry Merchant, and obviously we'll await further interviews from there in the ring as we attempt to explore this situation more fully. Marlon Starling is having the bottom part of his leg wrapped and taped. Apparently he suffered an injury. I don't know whether that occurred as he fell from the punch or perhaps as the melee broke out in the ring following the fight, Ray, because there were literally hundreds of people who were trying to get into the ring. And right now, through interpreter Tito Alba, Larry Merchant will chat with Thomas Molinaris. Larry? Uh, Thomas Molinaris. Uh, Thomas, would you explain what happened from your point of view? Quiero explicar desde tu punto de vista qué fue lo que pasó. Bueno, la verdad que al principio nos estaba un poco descontrolando por las manos, pero en ningún momento eh, perdí la calma porque yo tenía la, las palabras más que todo en mi cabruza. Imagínate, un mes y medio insistiendo lo mismo, la misma cintura y que tenía que ser la mano derecha poderosa. Al fin todo salió bien. At the beginning I was a little bit out of control, but as the fight went on, I got more confidence because of my manager and my trainers telling me what to do and I was trying to follow exactly what they were telling me to do. There's some dispute about whether the punch was thrown at the bell or after the bell. How did he see it or hear it? Se dice que el golpe se lo diste antes de la campana o después de la campana. ¿Cuál es tu opinión? Antes de la campana. Before the bell. Thank you very much, Thomas. And now back again to Jim and Ray.
And Larry, right now, to add to the freakishness of this situation, Marlon Starling is having a broken leg wrapped. We do not yet know how Marlon Starling sustained a broken leg, but a stretcher has been brought into the ring. His leg is being wrapped and set by doctors at this moment as Eddie Futch holds the hand of his fighter. And with a broken leg, Marlon Starling is prepared to exit the ring. And you hear him saying, I'm not going to go out on the stretcher. No. I'm not going out on the stretcher. Watch his foot. Watch his foot. Watch his foot. That's how I do Here's what happened one more time, Ray. Well, yeah, both guys throwing punches. What can you say? I mean, the punches were still in progress, as uh, referee Cortez stated. Hey, Joe Cortez has one of the toughest jobs in sports. I'm sure that you yourself have often reflected that refereeing a boxing match is as difficult as umpiring a baseball game or refereeing an NBA championship game. Maybe tough. It's argumentative. I mean, no question about it. I mean, both guys, both camps will definitely say their man was victimized, or more so from uh, the Stalin's camp. Let's go to Larry Merchant with Marlon Starling. Marlon, 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 would you explain what happened from your point of view? Well, uh, I, I believe I was running around and my leg got twisted under his and, it's, you know, it snapped and he hit me on the way down. You felt that your, your leg is broken what, after you were hit? Um, I, I don't know, you know, he didn't hit me to put me down. You felt that you that you hurt your leg twisting away oh, from him yeah. as the bell rang? Of course, of course. You heard the bell ring? Yes. And then you, and then as you twisted away, you said you heard something snap, and then you got hit. Well, I, I'm not saying I heard something snap, but you know, I twisted it. But um, we still could go. You know, there's nothing wrong. I'm all right. Well, you you seem to be dominating him up to that point. The last two rounds, you were in complete control. I'm still in control. What are your feelings, though? They've declared the other guy the champion. He is the champion now. I don't think he's the champion. How can he be the champion? Win. We're Win. Testing and we're bringing the suit. The, the referee has ruled that the punch he was launched. Was out? Was out? When did he count? They did count you Win. out. He did count you out. He didn't hit me. Marlon, he did hit you. And if you don't remember it, that's proof that he hit you. Well, he hit but the dispute is whether he hit you as the bell rang or after the bell rang. Our well, they stopped the fight. And they stopped the fight because they counted you out and they ruled that you were knocked out. Do I look knocked out? Do I look like I'm wobbled? Well, you only have to be knocked out for 10 seconds. I wasn't knocked out. I wasn't knocked down. Right, what, what, have you, what have your doctor told you? Has he told you that he thinks you have a broken leg? Did they want to I, take I, you out? I didn't, think, I didn't talk to the doctor. I can go another round. Thank you, Marlon. Once again, I want to point out that the handlers of Marlon Starling are going to protest this result. They say they're going to bring suit. I don't know if they have any recourse or not. It seems unlikely. Jim? All right, Larry, now let me communicate directly with our producers at this moment. New Jersey State Athletic Commission Chairman Larry Hazard is now standing at ringside with an HBO headset.